Welcome back to another Arena Simulation video. What I'm going to talk about today is how you can start to incorporate resources into your simulations and do things like animation of resources, show you how resources can be used in a set, how the preferred order and priority works for seizing resources, how schedules and failure work, and a few other things. Let's go ahead and get started. So as I get started, I'm assuming you have a basic understanding of some arena principles, what a process module is, what a seize release module do, seize delay release modules do when you split them up, and what create and dispose modules do. If you need a refresher, you can go ahead and watch the previous videos in the series, especially the one just before this one about processes, because that will give you a better understanding of what this specific simulation I'm going to show you, at least the first one, is doing. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Just a reminder of our simulation and any discrete event simulation, you're looking at the flow of entities over time. So the entities here are customers arriving to a coffee shop. The resources in this coffee shop, in this case, are things like the baristas. They're the thing that is being seized and is being taken and is being used when something is in the process. You're not usually going to see resources moving around or resources flowing. If you see something moving between blocks in this case, that's going to be an entity. So what happens here is the entity shows up to the create module and then they flow through to the seize. They seize one resource right here, barista number one. And that first barista is delayed for a short amount of time and then it is gone through. And before this first person is released, the next one is seized, which means that every time if anyone is able to leave that initial ordering line, they're going to instantly start in the paying line. In other words, there's no room for whip between those two stations. So every time someone is finished, a more exact way to say that would be that there's never anyone waiting in line to start paying. They're just waiting in line being occupied already by that first resource. There's a delay for paying. And again, this delay is for resource and it's going to be for resource two because that's how this simulation is set up. That's barista number two. Barista number two is then released in this release module. And then the third C's release pairing is actually just that. It's the idea is you just press a button and you can walk away. So you're seized and then instantly released. There's also a delay, but that delay at the very end only applies to the customer. So the, the third barista, actually it's an option, it could be barista one or two, is going to go help somebody else. That's the simulation we're working with. And what I want to do is add something like failures and add schedules to see, oh, maybe your barista has an unplanned break that they leave on, and maybe they have a schedule that they're working on, you know, various different shifts more applicable at a manufacturing plant. Okay, let's go ahead and work with that one. The first thing I want to show you is a set. As you can see right here, there's a set here of baristas also do things I was playing around and I added a pastry chef to this one to show you that it doesn't just have to be barista one, two, three, etc. And I was doing this to show you that there can be a preferred order to different things. So you could have both baristas would be able to help maybe start the coffee machine, take the order, and maybe the pastry chef could as well. We'll come back and maybe we'll add pastry chef to this and see what happens. Okay, so that's good. Uh, we have our, our resource set set up there, which we could use for a few different things. It's called baristas, includes pastry chef, that should be okay. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at the resources more closely and play around with a bunch of different options here. What you're noticing right now is that there is a fixed capacity of one currently for every one of these things. It's possible that you just have a fixed capacity of two, two versions of barista one, two versions of uh, barista two, etc. Uh, you, so you don't necessarily have to split things out individually like that one, and you might not need an exact specific member in order to move something around, although it does help to keep things more exact in some cases, like the one I have here where you have to release someone before you can seize the next person. Okay, so in, let's say instead that we want this to be based on a schedule instead of a fixed capacity. What we can do is do that based on schedule, which means we're going to have to create a schedule, and let's just name this barista schedule, barista SCD, barista schedule. And now this means we're actually going to go ahead and need to open up the schedule tab, which is in data definition if you're in Arena 16 or will be under basic or advanced processes if you're working with something earlier than that. You can see barista schedule has been automatically created for us. And what we can do now is we can change this and we can add some different rows, for instance. Let's go ahead and say, yes, the base time units and hours make sense for this one. And we're going to add a 
these schedules. So let's say for the first three hours, we are going to have one person working. For one hour in the middle of the day, we're going to have uh, zero people working. So there's zero people working for one hour. Actually, I got this first one backwards. So the value should be one for the first three hours, then zero people working for one hour, and then one person, maybe, you know, second person comes in after lunch, and you have two people working there. For, let's just do one person. One person working for the last four hours. And how different schedule durations work in Arena is my run time is currently set up to be 24 hours. The schedule is only eight hours long. And what this will do is it will run through schedule one, and then when schedule one is done, it repeats it at the very top and then repeats it again. So in 24 hours, it's going to run three times. There's going to be one person available for three hours, nobody for one hour, one person available for four hours, and then it repeats. That's the barista schedule I'm working with here. Note this is a capacity schedule. If you tried to make an arrival schedule, like for the create module, you wanted arrival specific to, maybe you can even upload an Excel file. We'll get into that in a future one. It, it, it does have a few options there. So there's your arrival schedule, or this is a capacity schedule because it is for a resource. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look back at our resources and you'll notice a few other options related to schedules. So this one right here is schedule rules. Let's say you're, the barista is acti actively working with somebody and they're pouring their coffee, they're taking their order and it hits 12 o'clock and it's time for them to go on break. What's going to happen? Well, you have a few different options. So you can see down here that there's wait, preempt, and ignore. What wait does is it waits until that process has com been completed, till they're no longer busy, and then they take their full one hour break in this case. So they'd come back a little bit later than, than the very end. You also have the option for ignore, so you can wait until that ongoing process there is complete, and then you can lose part of your break. So if you're working with somebody and it hits noon, you're still working 12, 10, you're finally available, you can take a 50 minute break, five zero, and come back directly at one. That's the one that's a little bit easier to understand in my case, but of course your workers and your union might not approve of that one. Now the very last one is preempt, so you can say your barista is working with somebody, hits noon, they instantly walk away. Maybe that's more applicable if you're in some sort of manufacturing warehousing environment where somebody can replace you and you'll have staggered schedules, although that's less likely. So preempt is that last one. In this case, I think we're going to go with wait as our preferred one because we only have a small number of people. There's a few other options here right now, and one of those is failures. As you can tell, I've already been looking at that a little bit. So this is maybe more applicable to a machine in a manufacturing environment, although we can, of course, explore that one a little bit further. So what the failure does, and we can actually pull up failure one, and you have the same settings of wait, ignore, and preempt. I think that uh, preempt might be a better one here because the ongoing process is immediately interrupted. The machine breaks in the middle of the process, and we can name that and give that different options. I called it failure one which means, you guessed it, we're gonna to have to jump into the failures data definition tab and come up with something there. Okay, so if we actually open up failures now, you can see that there's a few different options. You have a count failure, so maybe after five items on average, this thing fails, or a time failure. So maybe in terms of uh, you know every one hour, for instance, uptime, you have different units and stuff. Every five hours, this could fail, and then there's some downtime. So let's say your machine is actually going to uh, you know, work roughly for, let's just give it a normal distribution and say it works for on average five hours before it fails and the standard deviation of that uptime, not the failure, the standard deviation of the uptime is just going to be one hour and the uptime units is set to hours. Now the downtime, once this thing actually fails, well sure, let's just say it's a normal distribution and it's going to take 10 minutes on average to fix this thing and has a standard deviation of two minutes with that one. That seems pretty appropriate. It's a much shorter fixing time. And then there's a few things like uptime in the state only, which you could play around with if you really wanted to, but you probably don't really need to. That's a time-based failure. If we look at a count-based failure, this would say fail every 100 parts and would be down for, you could even just do a constant and say exactly you know, one minute. So every, every let's say, exactly 100 parts, it's gonna have an exponential time to repair. And you might see this as time to repair instead of downtime, MTTR mean time to repair. Let's just say it takes, you know, five, uh, five minutes on average to fix this every 100 parts. 
seems like a lot, but maybe this is something that's pretty reliable. So we can go back to our resources and we can actually add in the, let's see, we can say that this is add a failure right here and give this one failure too. Okay, so now we have a bunch of different resources. It might be hard to keep track of who's actually doing what, where, where are things in this process? And this is where something like animations can come in handy. So these are our first animations we're going to see. You'll have to actually stop playback and I'll just start it over too so that we can actually do our animations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate a resource. You have a bunch of different options and you want to make sure you're selecting which resources you are. I'm going to go with Barista 1 and leave all the defaults with that one. And I'll see if I can make this pretty big so it's nice and easy to see. There's Barista 1. We can actually see if we can copy this one for Barista 2. We'll go in this and set this as Barista 2 and go back to our model and do the same thing there for the pastry chef. Now, if you remember, the pastry chef doesn't have any failures or schedules associated with that one. So we'll see if we can mess around with a little bit of that one. Awesome. Looks like we didn't press save on our last time. Okay, so now we have our, our resources there. We have fixed capacity. Let's just put them, maybe the first two will be on a schedule and then we'll just copy and paste the name in there. And the last one is gonna have a capacity one. You have one pastry chef just kind of floating in there, able to do whatever. And I guess let's give him a failure as well. Let's give him failure one. Now the only case right now in the simulation where the pastry chef is going to be used is under the seize for machine process because it's seizing from the set of baristas, which confusingly enough, remember we did define to have a pastry chef there. And what we could actually do is say, let's pretend the pastry chef is, chef, chef is generally pretty busy and we only want to use them and you know, when we're not actually you know, helping other customers, stuff like that, when they're not doing their own thing. So you only want them to come start the coffee machine when the other two are busy. What we could do is change the C set to do C's baristas based on selection rule is preferred order. And now it's going to seize in that same order we ordered it in that I said was important earlier. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this simulation and see what the animation actually looks like. So let's slow this way down and talk about the different options here. So green means that you are, act you are actively being used. There's utilization going on there. You can see that the third green set, the pastry chef, only turned on for the one instant when the machine was started and stopped. That is, of course, only seized when the other two aren't already busy. Okay, so the other two are, at, so at this point, at 100% utilization rate, they always have things that they're being worked on, and they're never going to go idle. Now, if we jump a little bit further on our process, we're going to start to see these colors turn just a little bit different, which should be interesting, at least, to take a look at. We'll have to go several hours even into the process. We're only even, you know, three minutes in. Let's speed this up a little bit. I'll try and slow this down when we have our failure. Yeah, you just saw a bunch of that stuff. Unfortunately, I don't know if I can really go backward here. We might have to just try and catch it again. I could look at exactly how many minutes it's supposed to be and look at the failures associated with that time. Okay, so you did see some red and you saw some other, other options there too. And again, what this stuff means is Inactive might mean you're on a break there, for instance. Idle means that you're, you know, just idle. Busy means that you're actually being used. And red is the failed state. That might be more interesting if you're trying to model some sort of manufacturing environment, which again, I just think is interesting to have those different options. And look at that. You can see this last one is red. The pastry chef has failed there at the very instance. So those are a few different things that you can use when you're setting and defining resources in Arena. If this video was helpful, you, you can click on subscribe and see more interesting industrial engineering things. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.